Without a doubt, Hollywood has its secrets. In the same vein, Hollywood stars have their own secret that they would rather have taken to the grave. However, some of these secrets found their way out and would leave even the most loyal of fans with their jaws open in pure shock and even terror. Some of these Hollywood stars had some twisted fetishes and pleasures that they enjoyed in the privacy of their own homes or secret places. Some of them will shock you, others will send shivers down your spine. Attraction to Children I was surrounded by creepy men when I was 14 years old. Didn't even know it. It wasn't until I was old enough to realize what they were and what they wanted that I went, oh my God, they were everywhere. These were the words of Corey Feldman, popularly known for his roles in the Hollywood industry as far as the 80s were concerned. According to Feldman, a sick wave of attraction to children is Hollywood's biggest secret, and it was even worse during the Golden Age era. Sadly, not a lot of people know this, and it is closely guarded because most of those with these sick and twisted pleasures are higher-ups in the industry who could easily buy silence and strike fear in the hearts of those who threaten to expose them. Feldman, during an interview where he tried to talk about this menacing problem in Hollywood, especially in the Golden Era, had to exercise caution so as not to put himself in trouble. He said, There's a lot of good people in this industry, but there's also a lot of really, really sick, corrupt people. And some people have gotten away with it for so long that they feel they're above the law, and that's got to change. But while most may be tempted to see this submission as Feldman's theories, there have been reports here and there during the Golden Age era of Hollywood where child stars were exposed to things they were too young to experience and treated inappropriately. One of the golden examples of this is the case of Shirley Temple. Unlike Feldman, Temple in her 1988 autobiography, Child Star, was not afraid to name names. She accused various actors and executives of mistreating her over the years, such as comedian George Jessel or producer David O. Selznick. Perhaps worst of all was musical producer Arthur Freed, known for his work on hits like An American in Paris and Singin' in the Rain. The two met when Temple moved from 20th Century Fox to MGM. She came into his office, where Freed declared that she would be his new star. Afterward, he unzipped his pants and exposed himself to the actress who was 11 years old at the time. Maybe out of youthful innocence or just out of shock, Shirley began to laugh. This angered the producer, who then threw her out of his office. Now this is just the tip of the iceberg of the things that children faced in Hollywood's Golden Age era, and these are the stories we know of. One may shudder at the stories that never made it to light. The Bedroom Power Play for decades, Hollywood has been plagued by a culture of exploitation and abuse, where powerful figures enjoyed and got off on wielding their influence to prey upon vulnerable actors and actresses. The recent revelations surrounding film mogul Harvey Weinstein have cast a glaring spotlight on the pervasive nature of this issue, but he is by no means the first to be accused of expressing such disgraceful behavior. Weinstein's downfall has been swift and dramatic, with multiple actresses stepping forward to accuse him of coercing them into inappropriate acts in exchange for career advancement. Shocking reports detail instances of Weinstein allegedly disrobing and demanding massages, wielding his power like a weapon to manipulate and control those around him. While he has vehemently denied these accusations, the damage to his reputation and career has been irreparable. Yet Weinstein's misconduct is merely the latest chapter in a sordid history that stretches back decades. Long before his reign of terror came to light, Hollywood's casting couch was an open secret, a sinister underbelly of the glitz and glamour that defined the industry. Iconic figures like Marilyn Monroe spoke candidly about the exploitation they endured, with Monroe famously likening Hollywood to an overcrowded brothel. In Anthony Summers' revealing biography of Monroe, the actress herself acknowledged the pervasive nature of the casting couch, admitting that while it didn't guarantee stardom, it certainly didn't hurt. She said, You can't sleep your way into being a star, though, but it helps. Even established stars like Dame Joan Collins were not immune to the insidious influence of the casting couch. Collins recounted a chilling encounter with a studio boss who attempted to coerce her into sexual favors in exchange for a coveted role. Refusing to agree to his demands, 
Collins found herself marginalized and passed over for the part, a stark reminder of the consequences of defying the status quo. As Hollywood grapples with the fallout from the Weinstein scandal, it's clear that the casting couch culture is deeply entrenched within the industry. While progress has been made in recent years to address this problem, much work remains to be done to ensure that aspiring actors and actresses are protected from exploitation and coercion. Only by shining a light on the dark corners of Hollywood's past can we hope to create a safer, more equitable future for all who work within its hallowed halls. Flair for Dramatic Secret Affairs When you fall in love or get married, it is expected you stay in love or married to the love of your life and work through whatever differences you have, depending on what those differences are. But in the case of some of the old Hollywood stars, it was rumored that some of them loved and enjoyed having extra affairs. It was like a game, one where they never seemed content with what they had going on and were constantly on the lookout for something different and newer. One such example is that of none other than Marilyn Monroe. In the early 1950s, Marilyn Monroe's romantic entanglements with President John F. Kennedy and his brother, Attorney General Robert F. Kennedy, became the stuff of legend in the annals of American history. These alleged affairs, shrouded in secrecy and speculation, have fueled countless rumors and conspiracy theories, with some even suggesting that they may have played a role in Monroe's tragic demise. The whispers of an affair between Monroe and President Kennedy first began to circulate in the early 1960s, as the actress's star continued to ascend to new heights. Their rumored liaison reached a fever pitch following Monroe's sultry and unforgettable happy birthday performance for the president at his 45th birthday celebration in Madison Square Garden on May 19, 1962. Clad in a form-fitting gown that left little to the imagination, Monroe's seductive rendition of the classic tune only served to fan the flames of speculation surrounding their relationship. But it was Monroe's alleged involvement with Robert F. Kennedy, the president's younger brother and trusted confidant, that truly captured the public's imagination. Rumors of a passionate affair between the actress and the attorney general began to swirl in the wake of President Kennedy's assassination, with some suggesting that their relationship may have been more than just a fleeting dalliance. James Spada, Monroe's biographer, stoked the flames of speculation when he revealed to people in 2012 that while there may be no concrete proof of foul play, it was widely believed that Monroe had indeed engaged in intimate relations with both Bobby and Jack Kennedy. This revelation only served to further fuel the rumors of the fact that some stars were simply too adventurous to stick with one partner, but even darker, it fueled conspiracy and intrigue surrounding Monroe's untimely demise, with some suggesting that her knowledge of the Kennedy brothers' secrets may have made her a liability. However, despite the lack of definitive evidence linking Monroe's alleged affairs with the Kennedys to her tragic demise, the rumors persist to this day. It is a mystery that continues to captivate the public's imagination. Whether fueled by fact or fiction, the story of Marilyn Monroe and her rumored dalliances with two of America's most powerful men remains a compelling and enduring chapter in the annals of Hollywood lore. A little too much love for animals. No doubt some of the actresses in Hollywood loved to have a good time and explore their bodies whenever and with whomever they pleased. As a matter of fact, it could be argued that the older Hollywood stars were wilder than the current stars when it came to exploration and living on the edge. But as much as they like to engage in physical pleasures with whomever they deemed fit, what happens when their physical partner is not a human at all? One of the shining examples in this regard is Clara Bow and her alleged intimate relationship with her dog. It all started with Clara Bow and her secretary Daisy DeVoe in 1930, marking a significant turning point in Bow's life and career. Clara Bow, often referred to as the It Girl, was one of the most prominent and beloved actresses of the silent film era, known for her vivacious personality and on-screen charisma. However, behind the scenes, her life was far from glamorous. Daisy DeVoe, Bo's secretary at the time, played a pivotal role in exposing the darker aspects of Bo's personal life. Their relationship soured when DeVoe left Bo in a fit of anger following an argument, taking with her piles of Bo's personal documents. 
Seeking revenge, or perhaps financial gain, DeVoe attempted to blackmail Bo with the information contained in these documents. Bo, refusing to succumb to DeVoe's blackmail attempts, took decisive action by involving the authorities and taking DeVoe to court. However, this decision would prove to have disastrous consequences for Bo. During the trial, DeVoe exposed intimate details of Bo's personal life, including her romantic relationships, partying habits, and alleged indiscretions. One such detail was the fact that where there were no men or women to satisfy her lustful desires, she would turn to her own dog. But that's not all. Bo is not the only one with such a sick fetish. Another woman named Bodil Johnson was also on the same train. As a matter of fact, she was nicknamed Queen of Bestiality. Born in rural Denmark in 1944, Bodil Johnson was raised on a farm where she had a horrific and brutal childhood at the hands of her religious nutjob mother. Regularly thrashed and denied any emotional comfort, Bodil found solace with animals. The suffering of her childhood became worse when she was raped while waiting for a train home from school. Her mother blamed her daughter for the rape and punished her for her sins. This brutality only pushed Bodil to identify more closely with animals than with humans, leading to her first teenage intimate act with the family dog. Sadly, that one mistake led to a whole new world for her and became a twisted pleasure and addiction even in her adult years. Bizarre Diet Preference Now, there have not been a lot of documented cases of this extremely twisted and disgusting pleasure, but there have been some whispered speculations here and there. However, the loudest of these whispers was documented by a man named Scotty Bowers, the go-to man for twisted, intimate pleasures of Hollywood stars back in the day. The claims were made by Scotty Bowers in his memoir, Full Service, My Adventures in Hollywood and the Sex Lives of the Stars, and they paint a vivid and scandalous picture of the secret lives of Golden Age Hollywood celebrities. One of the most shocking stories from his book involves British actor Charles Lawton and his purported fetish, as recounted by Bowers. According to Bowers, Lawton had a particular sexual interest that involved a peculiar ritual. He allegedly requested Bowers to bring a young male guest to his house while his wife was away. Upon arrival, Lawton engaged in a seemingly mundane activity, preparing a sandwich with lettuce, tomatoes, and sourdough bread, accompanied by lemon juice, salt, and pepper. However, the situation took a bizarre turn when Lawton and the young man retreated to the bathroom. Bowers described the scene upon their return, noting that the young man appeared sheepish and embarrassed, his erection having dissipated. Lawton then gestured towards the sandwich on the plate, which Bowers observed to have been lightly smeared with a mysterious brown substance. The implication, as described by Bowers, is that Lawton engaged in a fetishistic act involving the preparation and consumption of the sandwich after the young man's participation in the bathroom. Bowers suggests that the act was intended to be both sexually stimulating and degrading. Performance Enhancers on Set the filmmaking process is an intricate web of collaboration, requiring the collective efforts of numerous individuals to orchestrate the creation of a cinematic masterpiece. From directors and writers to actors and crew members, each contributor plays a vital role in bringing the vision to life on the silver screen. However, in the high-stakes world of Hollywood, the success of a project often rests on the shoulders of a single celebrity, whose performance or name recognition can make or break a film. The immense pressure inherent in this reality is enough to weigh heavily on even the most resilient individuals. But for those grappling with substance abuse issues, the demands of the industry can worsen an already precarious situation. Unfortunately, Hollywood has a history of enabling the addictions of some of its brightest stars, perpetuating a culture of excess and indulgence. One glaring example of this phenomenon is comedy legend John Belushi, whose tumultuous relationship with drugs and alcohol is well documented. Despite his undeniable talent and comedic genius, Belushi's struggles with substance abuse ultimately led to his tragic demise at the age of 33. The 1980 film The Blues Brothers, in which Belushi starred alongside Dan Aykroyd, stands as a testament to both his comedic prowess and his battle with addiction. 
Shocking reports emerged alleging that the budget for the Blues Brothers included provisions for cocaine, highlighting the extent to which drug use had infiltrated the Hollywood scene. This revelation serves as a stark reminder of the dark underbelly of the entertainment industry, where the pursuit of success and fame can often come at a devastating personal cost. Furthermore, during the golden age of Hollywood, which spanned roughly from the 1920s to the 1950s, the studio system held unprecedented power over the film industry. Major studios like MGM, Warner Brothers, and Paramount controlled every aspect of movie production, from casting to distribution, and maintained a carefully crafted image of glamour and sophistication. However, behind the scenes, the reality often differed drastically. The studio system operated under the principle of star-making machinery, where actors were groomed, managed, and marketed to the public as larger-than-life figures. This intense level of control extended beyond professional obligations and seeped into the personal lives of stars, dictating everything from their appearance to their relationships. For many actors, the pressures of fame, combined with the demands of the studio, created a breeding ground for substance abuse. One of the most famous examples of this phenomenon is Judy Garland, who rose to fame as a child star under the MGM banner. Garland struggled with the pressures of stardom from a young age, enduring grueling work schedules, strict dieting regimes, and constant scrutiny from studio executives. To cope with the stress, Garland was reportedly introduced to amphetamines to boost her energy levels and barbiturates to help her sleep. This dangerous cocktail of drugs eventually led to a lifelong battle with addiction and contributed to her untimely demise at the age of 47. Another prime example was Marilyn Monroe, another iconic figure of the era who also fell victim to the studio system's influence. Monroe's image as a blonde bombshell and sex symbol was meticulously crafted by 20th Century Fox, but behind closed doors, she struggled with feelings of inadequacy and insecurity. Monroe's drug use, which included prescription medication and alcohol, was well documented and is believed to have been encouraged by the pressures of fame and the demands of studio executives who intentionally turned a blind eye to her pleasure, even though they were slowly drawing life from her. A Twisted Sense of Belonging Old Hollywood has long been a subject of fascination and speculation, with its glamorous facade often concealing darker, more mysterious aspects. Among the many rumors and whispers that have circulated over the years, one of the most intriguing is the notion that some of its biggest stars were involved in cults or secret societies. During the golden age of Hollywood, which flourished from the 1920s to the 1950s, the film industry was dominated by powerful studios that meticulously crafted the public images of their stars. Behind the scenes, however, rumors swirled about the private lives of these celebrities and the possibility of clandestine affiliations. One of the most persistent rumors involves the alleged involvement of certain stars in secret societies or occult practices, Tales of Hollywood elites dabbling in esoteric rituals or participating in exclusive clubs have captivated the public imagination for decades. While concrete evidence to substantiate these claims is scarce, the allure of the forbidden and the unknown has kept these rumors alive. One name often associated with these rumors is that of actress Marlene Dietrich. Known for her sultry allure and enigmatic persona, Dietrich was rumored to have been involved in occult circles and secret societies. While the extent of her alleged involvement remains unclear, her reputation as a mysterious and alluring figure only fueled speculation about her potential connections to hidden worlds. Similarly, figures like Orson Welles and Anton LaVey, the founder of the Church of Satan, have been linked to Hollywood's underbelly of secret societies and occultism. Stories of clandestine gatherings, arcane rituals, and dark conspiracies have added layers of intrigue to the already mythic status of these iconic figures. Knack for secret wild parties. Another very notorious twisted pleasure of Hollywood stars is their knack and magnetism for wild parties. Especially in the realms of old Hollywood, special parties were organized simply for celebrities to attend and kick back. However, the purpose of these parties was a little more than to kick back and have fun. These parties were thrown so celebrities and stars could come around and practice their wildest desires with zero fear of judgment. No press, no journalists, nothing. 
Some of these parties were so secretive that the hosts, sometimes another celebrity, would usually be sworn to secrecy, never to divulge what goes on in these parties. One of the most notorious examples of these debaucherous soirees was the infamous Bacchanalian Ball hosted by actor Errol Flynn at his sprawling estate in the Hollywood Hills. Flynn, known for his rakish charm and devil-may-care attitude, spared no expense in creating an atmosphere of hedonistic excess at his legendary parties. Guests, including fellow actors, socialites, and even members of the Hollywood elite, were treated to an evening of opulence and indulgence, with champagne flowing like water and the air thick with the scent of scandal. But it wasn't just Flynn who reveled in the excesses of old Hollywood nightlife. Stars like Ava Gardner and Frank Sinatra were known for their legendary parties where the whiskey flowed freely and the music never stopped. Gardner, the epitome of old Hollywood glamour, would often host intimate gatherings at her Los Angeles home, inviting friends and fellow celebrities to partake in the revelry late into the night. Sinatra, the legendary crooner and bon vivant, was equally famous for his raucous affairs, where the guest list read like a who's who of Hollywood royalty and the cocktails were as potent as the gossip. Rumors swirled about what went on behind closed doors at these exclusive gatherings, with whispers of wild orgies, drug-fueled binges, and clandestine affairs adding to the mystique of old Hollywood's nocturnal playground. While the specifics of these rumors may never be known, the tantalizing glimpses of excess and indulgence offer a window into a bygone era of glamour and decadence. Despite the allure of these legendary parties, they were not without their consequences. Scandals erupted with alarming regularity, with tales of drunken brawls, stolen kisses, and illicit liaisons making headlines in the tabloids. But for the stars of old Hollywood, the allure of the forbidden and the promise of escape from the pressures of fame were often too intoxicating to resist. As the sun rose over the Hollywood hills and the last strains of music faded into the early morning light, the revelers would stumble out into the dawn, their secrets safe for another night. And as the world slept, old Hollywood continued to burn brightly, a beacon of glamour and excess in a world gone mad with desire.